Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, everything and amazing propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, the one and only master propaganda hero, like defender of the fatherland, of it all, one me one owner. Toronto coastline in the south stands, Irvin Rommel, not the actual one, just a guy, you know, with liking his name, I guess. Fun here for the Deutsches Afrika Corps. Here with the 16th Panzer Division with a bike Panzer Grenadier stand northeast. It is Havoc fighting for freedom, democracy, liberty. Here with the double scout into rifle squad start here. Fighting forwards here with the 1st Infantry Division. As always, big hearty thanks to my patron supporters for the continued generous and absolutely heroic support of the propaganda cast. And a big thanks to those who keep commenting and liking my videos. Helps out immensely with, you know, the YouTube algorithms as they, you know, spread out the video further. So, we got armored support here, though, for Erwin Rommel, a classic. Of course, has the Pavloid and a bunch of things to make your tanks and light vehicles better. So, it does tend to be a fair bit popular besides its hand combined arms. Scouts, they're probing north. It's pretty steady approach here so far. Bikes sort of going about. You can see that the troops, meanwhile, the Panzer Glenies and the Panzer Pioneers being used to sort of push close here to Havoc's base. Plus, perhaps hoping to sort of, you know, time up here, allowing the bike to make better progress elsewhere. In this case, Scouts is following the Panzer Glenies just in time. And, of course, if Emin Rommel pays attention, he'll just move up, then bully out the Scouts fully. We got a second Panzer Glenies escort here. Panzer Pioneer busy here. Note wiring off the heavy cover there. Thumbs up. Scouts push back, losing Bob in the process. Rav Squad busy up here. Second Rav Squad for Havoc. So far, fairly standard build orders on both sides. Of course, I will see what falls up next here for Evan Rommel. But there you go. Panzer Grenadier. Will it be a half track? Will it be more Panzer Grenadiers? Will it be tech? There's, of course, all big questions here. Rav Squad heading south for the German troop being pushing north for the space down here. Might try and push up north for secure the area here, which of course could put pressure on Havoc. Of course, Havoc could do the same and get to these buildings and secure the area there. So there's already here, like, you know, some positional warfare mind games going on. But there you go. Havoc strikes first, pushing westwards here. Meanwhile, Evan there, a bit slow there to move up his troops. Bike getting shot out by the Rifleman. Panzer Pioneer, that Panzer Pioneer is all on the move here. We've got Flame First there, of course, an excellent upgrade on your Panzer Pioneers. Third Panzer was here for Evan Rommel. Third Ralph squad here for Havoc. So both sides committing hard to that infantry bite. They're being pushed back. Closing in here. And there go GIs withdrawing here under heavy German pressure. Scouts, they're left to fend for themselves as German troops push forward. No bike rushing in here. Gonna fix it up here. Bit risky, of course. The Panzer Pioneer has become easy to hit here. But in this case, it does work out. The scouts take a lot of damage. Havoc is pushed off here. Third Panzer Glenier squad ready there. Panzer Glenier's cause where the backbone of the German Panzer Green Divisions and Panzer Divisions. Typically two a squad made up of two fight man fire teams or four man as the on with each with their own machine gun. Scout upgrade on the way there. Send up Son of Battlegrove there for Havoc though. We got the light support company there for Evan. Raven setting out as well. Scouts quickly forced off this course, also in the northern fuel point. Havoc goes for the infantry support center, the captain, and of course, some good upgrades for his infantry. That doesn't really tell us further as to what battle group he's picking. I mean, it could be any of the three with ease, though. We'll have course of I mean, it could be armored, though. I mean, as the match goes on longer and longer, armored will be the more overwhelmingly likely choice here out of Havoc. So broader push here by Havoc in the north. At the same time, he's only got two squads versus several Panzer Grenadiers, and coming across to still the bike support them as well. South side, Ralph Squad charging in Panzer Pioneer, but we got grenades for Havoc. Going to be A great against the infantry, but also versus the bike or any other light vehicles out of Elvin, who is going for the fire support elements upgrade, like a flat feeling here. And I imagine, of course, Havoc is already anticipating that. So, how will Havoc, is, you know, likely, you know, A, either, you know, prepare for it, or, you know, at least set himself up so when it arrives. He doesn't get completely bowled over because typically in these cases you can like either hope your opponent doesn't go for it, but still have like you know backup option in case they do, or you already like you know bring in the preparations so you know when they do bring it in you're already ready. Option A, of course, typically being a lot more risky, but at the same time if your gambit pays off, you can typically do some other cheeky stuff. But again, it's a gambit, it's a risk. Comes with their pushback. 
Brief can send MD34 there, but Evan stayed his hand, deciding perhaps on other things. Got engineers for Havoc. Repairs, flamethrowers, minesweepers. A lot of stuff there he could be scheming about there. But Evan Rommel, meanwhile, not doing too much there. Guess it is the flak feeling he wants to go for here. That's why he wants to keep the manpower flowing as well. Havoc sneak up here again, using the scouts to quickly, you know, find gaps in uh, the German lines and sneak through. Weapon support center, so yeah. Likely going to be relying on bazooka teams, maybe anti-tank half-tricks then a pinch. There's never been an overall surge in bazooka teams, I find. Of North here, Panzer is pushed back. And of course, Evan doesn't have any ambulance. He doesn't actually have any way of healing these. There we go, flak feeling light, but again, no healing. He could, of course, call in the 250 half fit There's Massault Grannies or Panzergus and use the 250 at least to briefly heal because he's now got, like, two squads here for, like, half or less than half health here. So that definitely also poses some risk there for I mean, It also, honestly, would be a good idea at this point just consider the veteran squad to upgrade to you know, make them tougher. Scoring up three squads and, of course, getting that upgrade which turns six-man squads with the fast experience gain and the harder to kill. So... That definitely would be a really strong choice there for Evan, honestly. Exceptionally so. Now with the meanwhile continue just to push ahead. There we do get the flame for us, so obviously gonna help this is dug in Germans. And we do get a half hit there for Havoc. And we get armored. So not much of a surprise cause last of rush out the half tags rather the M3 half track. Will it be the end tank half track? No, it will be the M16 port mount featuring the M45 maximum mount there. The 450 caliber machine guns there. Which the Americans use primarily as sort of their primary anti aircraft weapon. Sort of like these unself propelled elements. No, Kansas are interested in the anti tank half track. So, have it there already, like, you know, making some quick shifts there. Really concerned about you know enemy light vehicles. Blame them. Hunter then push back the RAF squad. There you go. Anti tank half track ready. And of course, Veteran C1 opening up for target weak point. And we got the ambulance, of course, ready here for Irvin and the 16th Panzer Division. Of course, ambulance in the German army. Well, most armies at that point could be like, you know, would typically be like trucks, but of course, we like, you know. Jeeps, Kubelwagens, half tracks, you know, a variety of vehicles could like and be pressed into ambulance service. Like Weasels, for example, would in certain, you know, combat theaters where show see the terrain was less great to view wheeled vehicles also be used in that role, for example. Got the BRs in the way of the havoc. Pack 38 for Evan. Scouts they're holding up, but versus the flak feeling, there's only so much you can do to hold up. Bars ready, anti tank half track reveals his position and blows up a fence. Germans, I imagine, are not too impressed. Jorgen, they blew up the fence! Man, those Americans really are lousy shots, aren't they? Yeah. The Havoc, they're pushing it across the entire frontage. We can see, of course, now with the Evan having most of his forces back, they part for healing. Of course, that does allow Havoc to make much easier progress. But now we do get some upgrades on the Panzergrenadiers. Still no veteran squad leaders. Again, this much infantry, and he's in fact going for another Panzer Pioneer squad to get minesweepers out. But yeah, he really should get veteran squad leaders. I really don't think they I mean, there's obviously some arguments against it, but they're clearly a main part of his force, so I really feel like he should be going for it. He certainly would, I think, get a bit more out of them in the longer run. At least, that's sort of my thoughts there. But there you go. Habit there pushing in, going for the fuel point. Of course, a few risks here. We got a bite, we got a flak film, we got a lot of German panzer grenades to retreat path here. If Havoc just hit retreat here, it could be a wipe as they'll have to like go straight through here. So again, something you want to keep in mind there. 30 cows out there. Panzer being provided by this entertaining half trick Brav and Demon as well there. Heavy flak filling fire. Scouts got the fuel point. Brav and Demon being pushed back here in the end by the mighty flak filling half track. Which is just utility half track and featuring the flak feeling flak feeling on this back. Which was one of the more common ways of the Germans just, you know, having anti-aircraft self-propelled is just, you know, either utility half track or a truck with it on the back. Anti-aircraft tanks were very rare.
Back here, a bit of healing reinforcement. Yeah, when they're floating a bit of manpower, probably just thinking about going for that bit attack. of Panzer Army Commando of getting some faster armor going. Though again, veteran squad leaders would really benefit. The Panzer Grenadiers could go for an MD-34. A lot of things they could go for, but Evan so far, keeping his cards close. Panzer, they pushed out, taking a lot of damage. Again, veteran squad leaders have a lot of disease, also need to take a bit less damage. Good shot here from the anti-tank half to- Oh! Flight flying slightly moves forward, it's not great. In the south here, Panzer Pioneer being assailed. We do get the MD-34 off Erben. Sector lost. Maschinengewehr 34. And we got the Super Teams here for Havoc. North Panzer is held down here by some heavy automatic bar fire. And there you go, MD-34 team ready. Pushing forward towards that southern victory point. Now of course that Emin does a big deal of havoc in terms of victory points. Bazooka team ready, machine and gear team also going ahead. Fun fact, but the MD-34 and MD-42 and the tripods would typically act to make quite far support for an infantry unit on the attack. But not really defensive weapons. In fact, when a team like this would come under attack, they'd actually remove the machine gun from the tripod and shift it to a bipod for better defensive action. So Fun fact there. The south then bike hits the mine. Having finally gets rid of that. And we got the advanced logistics. Of course, great upgrade with all the troops he has. And support weapons. That's of course going to be great value there for Havoc. As it always is, honestly. Evan is close again on some tech. He's got for the light infantry gun. Like this infantry like shots, of course. Great, in particular again on a small map like this, it's going to be amazing. So that's certainly going to add some complications for Havoc. How interesting after rushing to the pack 38 here, could lose it here if he's unlucky. Makes a mistake, and down it goes. Definitely sleeping a bit there, or maybe it was just bad pathing, who knows. But all the way, the pack gun crew there managed to knock it out there. He's stinging blow there to Havoc. Leaving least just for the time being, just with the bazooka team to deal with the flak feeling. Up north, again, he keeps striking those northern resources. Again, exploiting here the fact that Evan is getting a bit too focused on the south here. Thumbs up to Havoc's play there. Got the war machine ability selected. Territory point is no longer under our Guessing control. he's going to go for the uh, discounted ECH with it. And there you go, Evan Rommel with the Panzani Commando. Bring in those Panzers. Comes with the engineers, he flat fin keeps running ahead here, scouts withdrawing. In the south here, Panzer has the Ralph squad here. Straight into it. A victory point has fallen into enemy control. Of course, getting a lot of value out of that flat fin half track here. A lot of value. Panzer me, Commander almost done there though. As for having going for another half tech, likely another anti tank half tech, of course, now with a discount due to the machine. I mean, he could do that. He's going to upgrade to an anti tank half tank. There's definitely been a, just an overall increase in people just going for that. Big increase. Back outside, boys. It's not like people just completely stop going for anti-tank guns, obviously, but the anti-tank half-tanks are a bit more mobile, and again, target weak point is quite good, and of course, in this case, it does have synergies for the armor battle group, so that provides it with a bit further utility. That might make it more attractive to some players. So it may not, of course, be the most flashy tank destroyer. You know, it's fairly cost-efficient and, you know, pretty handy. Hunter is staying off the rough court hill on the MD-34. There you go. Anti-tank half-track on the job. And Evan, he actually goes for a flamethrower tank. He goes for the Panzerman Commando, but then goes for the flamethrower tank. And there's obviously nothing wrong in that, but I would expect the regular Panzer III perhaps first. But here we are, the Flamme Panzer III. And there you go, squad caught here by it. Of course, also giving Hammond calls a big signal that there is a flamethrower tank in the field. I mean, now he knows ahead of time. And... 
To add a bit of fun here to Havoc, Max will snare it up so it actually gets stunned briefed in front of the Bazooka team, maybe giving them a few extra shots here. Everyone though continues to not operate with any... Veteran school leaders there. And the center German force holding up the American south side here. Flammenpanzer drive being repaired. Well, the southern fuel point is being seized. Fresh push here by Havoc. Again, Havoc feeling a bit the strain there from his opponent. But he is, of course, a determined fighter. Been it's theirs now. Not easily deterred. The Flammenpanzer drive, of course, being one of many flamethrower tanks the German army will operate from the first ones, which just basically Panzer 1s with a flamethrower stuck in, replacing a machine gun to the Flammenpanzer 2s, which were a bit more, you know, focus produced, to the Flammenpanzer 3. Even had some converted French tanks with flamethrowers in them, the Shah B specifically, which also used in several places. And even towards the very end of the war, they actually had a plan to use old Tiger tanks with the turret been knocked out, destroyed, and then just convert those into flamethrower tanks. Which certainly sounds like the stuff of nightmares, a flamethrower tank the size of a Tiger. And it's Flamethrower Fleet catching the Rathcore here, incinerating them. Doing a lot of damage, but they got the Zulu team ready here. Obviously a bit bold of having to stuff into the building where the flamethrower tank would get a bonus. Finds up here and there for each for the draw. They're getting burned up here, and we get Tully here on the flak feeling. And mines they're blowing up. Havoc's advance, answering Hopter going for the flak feeling. But again, we got the pack for it here. Wants more prune to be Havoc's nemesis here, and we're going to see another entertaining half track knocked up with the same pack 38. Yikes. White Frost was there in the MD 34. Closing over the Panzer Gunners and the MD team and forcing it back. And there you go, Havoc with the tank. Depot, we got Scots and we got the EC8 production there. And we got Armor Reserves for Elvin. So, could go for Fast Panzer Force with Stukes. He could also try and hold up for the Tiger. But of course, I have to see what exactly Elvin's streams are made of. And there we go, like to send fun to of course, continues to be a nuisance here. Again, it can, you know, provide pretty broad coverage from relatively safe to to the base. Similar to, you know, pack houses, for example. Glam Panzer on the move again. And there you go, tank devil ready for Havoc. He's almost there fuel-wise, but manpower-wise, obviously the pressure on Havoc is a bit high, particularly with the arrival of the flame for a tank, so it's not quite as easy. We got there, Alvin and the 16th pushing at Norfords. Wave of troops out of Havoc space. Defend our victory point. We're losing it. 153 is 452. Definitely quite the gap here. And we got another pack for data Alvin, so I can't help but escape the feeling that definitely smells a bit of a tiger stall here out of Alvin. There's more Koto instincts there. But you could pretty much be guaranteed that the strategy 9% of the time was to get turned to tank guns and then stall into the big heavy tank. And even 90% might be like, you know, an understatement. Might actually be 95%. But anyways, look, of course, obviously that is Evan's plan, but it's certainly at this stage could be it. In particular, again, due to the somewhat narrow nature of Toronto coastline. But that said, it is a map that also offers more flanking opportunities. This small narrow terrain is at least more broken up, making it a bit tough just to establish an easy coherent defense. But yeah. Havoc only, again, having one bazooka team to, like, deal with all of Evan's stuff definitely makes it a bit tough for him to, like, you know, extend his presence there. Take with the flak feeling, just quick suppressing, and there you go. Sherman is in there for Havoc. Brant Pitt is on the move. Right from taken out. Of course, courtesy of fast deploy, his easy hit will hit pretty fast. 
That definitely could take out the Flam Panzer there. Rather explosive there, go Sherman easy down. Ready for deployment, sir. Outside, hurry. Use a smoke there. Contact, heavy MG. You fed holding the Ralph squad. We got the tools. Back here, better quiet. Sherman easy, of course, slowly rolling ahead. No 50 cows at it. And there, gun, you heard 14 bit of trouble, the Scotchman machine supporting cause more crucially the EC8 is arriving. Almost had it there. And in the center, the flam punter blocking another attempt if Havoc to extend his presence, the flak filling another block there. Of course, if Havoc were to strike Norfolk with the EC8, he could catch, of course, some of his uh, more hated targets. And of course, still the Pack 38s to deal with too. But the EC at least doesn't go down just two shots from them. So there is that. German Assault heating up again. Still no veteran squad is there from heaven. And also not much then in terms of battle. Now go visibly them catching the flam pans up. East hitting from the north, they could tail behind them. Raj going up there, go. Yep, we're gonna see a snare here. At which point, Evan is definitely gonna be guaranteed to lose that flam pans unless the fates intervene in a rather cruel and nasty. Oh! He hits a mine with the EC8. That is exactly what he needed. And we needed to keep that flame for a tank alive. Oh, that was rubbish there for Havoc. Certainly highlighting a need for minesweepers, perhaps. And instead of now having a daring attack here that could, like, you know, break Evan's flank, instead it's Havoc now sent fleeing there from the south. Oh, what a twist. Now, of course, these hit is in heavy repairs. Reports of enemy movement near our victory point. Of course, the flame for a tank is also in repairs, but he's already got the self repair upgrade. They've researched the crew can do it themselves. So there you go, easy to resume repairs. We got a Stuka dive bomb in a very, very rare right sight since you know the Lloyds it tends to be a lot more popular, and particularly again on a small map like this. But again, it can like you know basically cover up so much a portion of the map, eh? Effectively. That is a bit of a surprise, I mean, it could have been a misclick, it could also just be that Evan just finds the loiter to be dull and cheesy, I mean, who knows what exactly cause Evan is thinking about chores, but... Ammunition's point is being attacked! 99, I think, percent of players, at least a good portion of them, would definitely pick the loiter over the dive bomb. In particular, again, on a map like Tyrande, because this map is just absolute heaven for loiters. That's definitely a bit of surprise out of Evan. And it's not like the Stuka dive bomb is bad, far from it. It's really good too, but it's not loiter levels of, you know, good. Enemy movement near victory point. Like, loiters just exist on a different level. Particularly the armored support loiter, which just completely melts tanks. But. We got another Sherman easy and loader for Havoc, bring in more tanks and more steel. Of course, in a pinch, he could theoretically go for an anti aircraft half track, but. At this rate, he's probably not going to, you know, have much need for it because, again, he's not going to have to worry about it. But, of course, I do imagine at the moment, Havoc probably is very concerned about the loiter. Exceptionally so. Now you go going for the flame for a tank here, between supporting. And tank guns are also busy elsewhere. This is a great opportunity for Havoc to deliver some heavier blows here to Alvin and the 16th Panzer Divi Short here. Almost got the easy 8 here. Very close here, but him pinned down. Pack 38's on the move here. Misses the opportunity, perhaps not. Rob's coming in here. Could see a double snare, which could finish it off. There we go. Got the flame for a tank. Massive blow here to Alvin. Okay, yeah, he has gone for the Tiger tank that the Tiger has arrived. Found a fourth Schwerer Pantabteilung. Bringing here Evan Rommel to steal. And there you go. Dive bomb revealed. Almost wipes the Ralph squad. And again, this is why some players will go for it. Because again, thrown at the right time in the right place. It can guarantee you a lot of carnage. But it's not a loiter. And there you go. Got the anti-aircraft track. 
On the pack, Rose are going down, we're rushing up the ambulance here. A bit risky here in front of Havoc, but he's probably betting on the Tiger Tank, drawing away attention from the ambulance. In this case, very much so, because again, even Americans, like, you know, have okay, some degree of, you know, self-preservation. So even though it's like an ambulance in front of them, they'll probably shoot at the bigger threat than the ambulance. Sir, there's an ambulance and a tiger coming at us. Oh no, they didn't teach me this is school. Uh, shoot the tiger, but sir, the ambulance, shoot the tiger. And of course, like, you know, after that, like, you know, 10 minutes of then just sobbing and weeping in the tank. It's a very sad music. Anyways. Heading south is the route squad here, but we continue getting a few shots in for the tiger's side armor. But having kind of got lucky they were getting both these hits out of that one, of course, we'll need to repair that. Like to send fun tiger shots, keeps blasting. And there you go, trying to push ahead here, Havoc's men, though, finding that this bold attempt to make a sort for the center is quickly cut short by an MU-34 in the Tiger Tank. Not surprisingly. Havoc, though, probably going to try and hold up for another Sherman EC-8. More Brat pit power. Waves of troops they're pushing forward. See, getting ready for an assault here into Havoc's heart point here with Northern Victory Points. Tons of Punia Spear in the effort are absolutely being cut down. Salt continues to see. This of course also for Southern Push if Havoc can manage. That also landing up the North here. Scouts are definitely about to uh, scout the afterlife. Down they went. But there you go. Now with the Southern Push here, goes for that Southern Victory Point. Exploiting at least the Northern Push here by Elvin. And we got another Flam Panther 3 out here. Honestly, a partner would actually rather seen the command tank because that could have boosted the tiger tank's armor to make the tiger tank even tougher to deal with. And could have fired high explosive oh, shells anyways to deal with the infantry, so. I feel like this, while technically not bad, I feel like it was a bit of a missed opportunity. I mean, it could be just another the population for it. Actually, it would have had, so, yeah. I think you should have gone for the command tank over the flamethrower tank. Machine crew there being incinerated. Evans on the assault here. The lines of the 1st Division of buckling under the wrath of the 16th Panzer Division. 30s hit that's right here for Havoc, Freedom, and Democracy. We've got 90 vs. 417. Havoc has the victory point stacked against him. All shots fire. He's just lining up for deep flank here behind Evan. Thumbs up. It's only one of the small advantages I do think this map has over the other tiny maps. There's more room for like outmaneuvering your opponent due to the way it's set up. Again, I'm not saying the map is perfect, but at least I feel like it has some redeeming features. 83 years of 14 17. Having an end didn't quite push through there. Meanwhile, though, Evans, of course, exploiting here. Having split armed forces to push ahead. So the team that's doing quite well with us, Rauch Corp. We've got the end tanks coming up here. Havoc has to move the other tank from the north here. And there you go, another mine goes off again. Very good mine here out of Evan. The Suga team goes down. Got the pack fed, got Tilly Fry there. Massive losses here for Havoc now. But he's not out of this yet. He could pop the HRF rounds here. He doesn't though. That's a definite missed opportunity here for Hamming, and it unfortunately does seem a bit, you know, calm with some touch. Sasha charging the pack, but he wipes it! Beautiful! Unless, of course, you got the German play, in which case, you're probably looking for a different word to describe that situation. And there you go, gets the Tiger tank here. They might lose another EC8 here. Yes! Again, this is where, again, the command tank, I think, would have definitely helped that situation out a fair bit more. And certainly would have really forced Havoc to go for the h rev rounds thing. But that's that. Either way, though, in the end, push through here. Of course, this is also where, like, if he had a loiter, Havoc would have been absolutely screwed over. 
so. Which of course only highlights just how dumb the loiter really is, like you just want the engagement easy. Of course, and of course I don't think having could have made that dive easily had he not seen that sugar bot drop, you know, sooner again, indicating cause he doesn't have that. But again, even without it, I think had he gone for a command tank instead of the flame for a tank, that engagement would have been, I think, also gone better there at Erwin. He didn't go for like Panzerstorm. In fact, there's so many things here that just Erwin, you know, just didn't make use of. So while I certainly do respect his, you know, reluctance to use the lighter, he still needs to make use of other stuff then. That definitely feels like a bit of a sleep here by Erwin. There we go, recovery tank for Havoc. This is where things suddenly get a bit messy here for his opponent because he could recover that Panzer 30 flamethrower tank there. I suppose you can like try and recover the Tiger tank, but that's probably a bit ambitious. The flamethrower tank, you could definitely do that. At the same time, Havoc splitting our forces hit the northern points there. Making off of the pack radio as well. Quite the messy situation. More pack ready to for Alvin to, of course, match the Sherman EC there. Now goes salvaging the flame for a tank there. Thumbs up. I mean, that's not a bad idea either. Alvin, and there you go. Stuka bomb, bomb drop here. Pretty easy to dodge there for Havoc. Yeah, the situation now for Elvin is looking a lot worse, and Havoc is now looking a lot more ascendant in part because he has an actual tank. He now also has a. Well, not an infantry advantage, but he does have. He's something to work the infantry with there with the tank. He does, in a sense, have a combined ops advantage. You're still. The tank has access to machine guns, so looking a lot less great here for Elvin. And the Guardian ac 8 now, which causes even worse there for Ervin. Trying to sound, of course, the tanks here for extra resources. And that's definitely not a bad idea at all. They have thumbs up to Ervin on that count. Yeah, Hammock is just laying down the law now. And there you go, Ervin ends up surrendering. He definitely had a good opportunity there, but again, I feel like he just... I mean, again, this the obvious one of just going for the loiter. And of course, that would have been the easy way of just winning this. And of course, in Havoc, in this case, you have to go for like M16s to like have a chance against it. Of course, the M16 is pretty good against loiters. But like, even without the loiter, a command tanks to the flame for a tank, I think would have been hugely beneficial just using Panzerstorm. So it's not like he absolutely needed the loiter. It would have been just the most easiest of choices, again, to an absurd degree. And again, loiters really shouldn't be there. But you know, even without it, Evan, I think, did have several choices you could earn. I think, you know, picked to actually have a much better chance of winning this. So, definitely feel like Evan kind of, you know, shot himself in the foot here. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. You learned something from it. If you did subscribe, like, share, comment. This is Imperial Legion. Cheers. And see you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye, everyone.